Well, sometimes it looks like someone dumped a gigantic bottle of dish soap in the ocean. And while that's clearly not the case, what causes sea foam? It's a question we tackle in Science with Speta. On windy days, we often get this question out at our area beaches. What is exactly sea foam and what causes it? So we're going to answer that question today. And who else to answer this question but a professor from Jacksonville University, Dr. Melinda Simmons. So thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I get those emails too. Was there a soap accident in the ocean, right? And actually what's happening is on windy days, we have a lot of mixing and there's uh, dissolved organic matter. So things like fats and proteins in the water from the animals and organisms living in it, right? Phytoplankton, things like that. And when that dissolved organic matter gets turned up, it creates foam. And so we're going to do a little experiment. So what do we, what do we got here then to kind of dick pick this? We have non-fat milk here, which has very little fat in it. And we have whole milk that has a lot more fat in it. And so the two things that lead to sea foam are the amount of mixing. So when we have no mixing, there's no foam. And then if we use our coffee frother here, if you like fancy coffees, um, as we mix it up, we'll start to see some bubbles on top. But if we do the same thing in our whole milk, where we have more dissolved organic matter, then we should see even more bubbles than we see in our non-fat milk. Now, when you say dissolve particles, let's say we translate this to the ocean. What, what are you talking about out there? So, for example, phytoplankton are single-celled organisms that use sunlight, right? And because they use sunlight, they've evolved ways to stay in the surface water. And so if you've ever made a vinaigrette or gotten one in a bottle, you'll notice that the lipids, the fats, the oil is on top, right? Mm -hmm. So these phytoplankton sometimes have lipids so that they can stay in the surface waters where the sunlight is, right? Well, if they get turned around or over time they die, these lipids get leaked into the water. And then when they get mixed up with the wind, they create that sea foam like we get with our whole milk. Now I can see actually the whole milk is, uh, I'm going to take a little closer look at this. Whole milk is notably getting a lot more frothy here. I guess if you're a connoisseur, you probably know this already, but uh, it's, it's really interesting how this translates out towards the ocean. Right. And so when you're out there and you see a lot of sea foam, it's probably a windy or stormy day. It's uh, not harmful. I mean, don't eat it. Don't roll around in it, but it's not a problem. It's a natural process. And uh, just make an observation and then uh, go home and make a cappuccino. That's fantastic. So I guess on the final note there, you mentioned, yeah, uh, I think a lot of times people see the sea foam and they think it's dangerous. Um, is it something you should just avoid or anything like that? Again, you never want to take something and, and rub it all over yourself or consume it or, you know, let your dog eat a lot of it. But it's a natural part of the process. So, yeah, right. it's not, not a big concern. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Simmons. I mean, it, it is interesting how you can translate this to what we see out there in the ocean. So next time you do see the sea foam, think of uh, whole milk. Yeah. All right. Thanks. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta with Melinda Simmons. All right.